So lots of great announcements to talk about. Um, first, I'll start off with what many are considering to be sort of the biggest announcement, and that is the new Final Fantasy VII trailer that came out on the PlayStation Experience, and it looks fantastic. I'm really, really happy and really surprised with how great it really looks. I mean, overall, there are the dissenters already, tons of people complaining about how it's not turn-based combat, and that would be my personal preference as well to see, you know, just the original game with updated graphics, but that's not really feasible, and realistically we all knew that was not really plausible, you know, that was not a realistic expectation, so I'm not surprised. Um, and But I don't think it's going to be terrible, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the amount of gameplay they showed. Um, it doesn't look like the combat is going to be like Final Fantasy 13. it looks like you still have the menu on the side, on the left hand corner, it looks like it's going to be a tried and true action RPG, but similar to something kind of like a Tales game almost. It reminded me a little bit um, of Tales of Hysteria, the way it was an action RPG, but there were also menu commands and timed abilities, and we'll, we'll see later on a little bit more about what it looks like and how they're going to change things. I think they're actually going to do a good job, and it fits in the style that they're doing. And speaking about the style, I was very happy, I was surprised when I saw the trailer. I kind of thought, well, maybe it's going to change a little bit too much, it's going to look a little too grim, it's going to change and not be recognizable visually. But I was surprised by the amount of nostalgia I got from watching this trailer. Almost every scene, every shot was recognizable if you played the original game. It really could, I could picture in my mind exactly what the old scene looked like while I was watching this new scene. It was fantastic. I'm, I actually think they're going to do a good job. And of course, again, you're going to have more dissenters saying that automatically because it's not the original, it's therefore not good. And I don't think it'll match the experience of the original, but part of that is you're never going to be able to recreate the circumstance under which the original game was released. You're never going to be able to recreate that feeling because this is not the same time. This is not 1997. Things are totally different. So I don't think if you grew up in that time, if you played the original game within that time frame, I don't think there's any you know, chance in hell that this remake could come close to matching that experience. I definitely don't expect that at all. But at the same time, I think it has the potential to be a fairly good game and a game that is a fun way of re-experiencing the original while thankfully still having the original to go back and play. It's going to be Final Fantasy VII, but a different experience with that same story and those characters in the world. And to me, it looks so far fairly impressive. And the most surprising thing, though, was the amount of gameplay that they showed, and something that a lot of people have not really mentioned from the reaction videos I've watched, that it was all in English. They already are, I feel they are definitely going to focus on a simultaneous worldwide release, and with the amount that's already completed, with what they showed, I am now 100% convinced that they are shooting for that 20th anniversary, that 2017 release date. I think it's going to be a worldwide, probably November, October, November 2017. And I'm really excited for that. 2017 is turning out to be a huge year. And speaking of games going to be released around that time, Shenmue 3 got a new update uh, just a few days ago here. If you were paying attention about a week and a half, two weeks ago, there was a little bit of leaked footage from the audience of Yu Suzuki giving a presentation talking a little bit more about some updates on Shenmue 3 and a lot of its relation to Chinese culture and being a fantasy, obviously fictional work, but that takes a lot of inspiration from actual real world things and traditions and art styles and he was giving a presentation about that we finally got an official update showing in detail a lot of slides and a little bit of an overview of things that were discussed during that presentation and it looks beautiful i'm just again blown away by how great this looks and how true shenmue 3 feels so far to the original two games and one of the most fascinating things i found though was towards the end I really enjoyed looking at the workflow chart and looking about how they were actually breaking down, going through the process of creating the game, talking about a little bit about using the Unreal Engine, talking about differences between making Shenmue 1 and 2 versus how the process is going now and how Yu Suzuki has sort of adjusted the story over time to be able to fit it to whatever the final budget was going to be, making it a very fluid way of telling the same story and how he was going to process it. And he gave away kind of in there talking about the number of chapters 
that Shenmue 1 and 2 covered and now Shenmue 3, I think it's pretty much guaranteed at this point that we're going to have Shenmue 4, if not Shenmue 5. And some people might be freaked out a little bit by thinking that way simply because we've waited so long for Shenmue 3 and we don't want a chance that, holy cow, something happens and Shenmue 4 never happens, we still won't get the end. We'll have you know, a second ray of hope and then it still won't end, but at this point, Shenmue 3 I don't think will be a mega hit, I don't think it will be a massive you know, 10 million seller, but at the same time I think it will be a minor hit and it will definitely have that hardcore crowd that's already been giving to things like the Kickstarter and PayPal, it will do well enough that I don't think there'll be a reason why there wouldn't be a Shenmue 4. And on top of that, with everything they're doing now with creating the engine, creating the world within this new engine, a lot of what I feel Shenmue 4 will probably be will take place in many of the same areas, maybe only adding a few new environments, and we'll obviously use the same engine, we'll use many of the same characters, and it's something where once Shenmue 3 is completed, a huge part of the work for a Shenmue 4 would already also be completed, kind of the same way with you know making Shenmue and Shenmue 2. I feel that if they are able to hit that fourth quarter 2017 release date, there's no reason why we couldn't see a Shenmue 4 fourth quarter 2018. So I don't think having you know the speculation anticipating really that there will be a Shenmue 4 is a very frightening you know, proposition, I think it's actually very exciting and we could get even more than we were hoping for. So all that was just absolutely just mind-blowing today. I wasn't, ex wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting a new trailer for Final Fantasy VII this quickly and I was not expecting to have this much gameplay footage already. I'm very surprised and I'm surprised at how true to the original as for as far as visually what they're presenting, as far as the story itself, they seem to be staying. Even though the gameplay changes are not something that are uh, preferable to me personally and to a lot of older fans, I do think it's a way of telling the same story to a more modern fan base, getting some new fans at the same time being presenting the game in a way it's not going to alienate old fans. So that was incredible news. But even better for me today, I think definitely on par with how great that Final Fantasy VII remake trailer was, we got a trailer for Ni no Kuni 2, which was very surprising to me. I was not expecting that. I mean, level 5, I could was going to see them going in the direction of either revisiting an older IP, something like Rogue Galaxy, or going back even to Dark Cloud, or bring out something entirely new. I really was not expecting the next big thing from them. To be a direct, you know, a sequel now to Nino Kuni. I was not expecting that, and it looks fantastic. It looks again like just a, you know, Studio Ghibli movie <laughs> as a game. It looks fantastic. And to me, though, something that is was not really sp spoken a lot about. I don't think it's really something that's made a lot of people's radar, and is not as big of a thing as uh, Nino Kuni 2 or Final Fantasy 7. Something that is just below Shemu 3 as far as exciting news, even more than Final Fantasy 7, is we have now been confirmed to have a Western release for Yakuza 0, that prequel that looks fantastic for the PS4. And I'm, I'm very excited. I love that series, and we've been kind of. It, it's been iffy whether or not we're going to get anything more from that series after 5. It's The history of that series in the West has already always been kind of hit or miss as far as what we're going to get, and I'm very excited because that is, to me it looks like it could be one of the best games in the series. It looks fantastic, I'm very excited. 2017 is going to be a huge year. I really, I really think within that year we'll probably get Final Fantasy VII, Shenmue III, Ni no Kuni 2 could come out ne by end of next year, there's not a, a release date or anything, but uh, something about it tells me it's more likely going to be 2017, who knows. And on top of that too, then I feel like we will probably not get the uh, uh, Yakuza 0, the prequel to 2017 also, so that's going to be crazy. And then next year we have The Last Guardian and Persona 5, the next couple years are going to be nuts on the PS4. I am absolutely blown away uh, after being fairly disappointed with the PS3 in comparison to what I experienced on the PS1 and 2, PS4 is bringing PlayStation back to form, and I'm really excited to see, again, a big resurgence, a rise of RPGs, a quality RPGs coming from Japan on home consoles, not really just handhelds, which last generation seemed to be the majority, not all, but the majority of best RPGs were in handhelds at that point. So this, to me, is kind of like 
We're seeing almost like a little mini renaissance in the way on the PS4, and I hope this continues. I am very excited, lots of great stuff today.